it says we're going live um, onto Facebook. And I'm checking to see if we are on the Owl Rock group. Two people enter the room. It's coming up on mine. See, the, admit them right here. All right, there's Dale and there's Debbie. I see Debbie and I see Dale coming on now. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is really interesting. Really interesting. There we go. Hmm. Hmm. Really interesting. It's the first time I've done this. So we, we, we've upgraded y'all. And um, let me get Gene on here to turn off his volume on Facebook. There we go. And now I'm back up onto. Yeah. Okay. So welcome. We are uh, live on one camera on my laptop with upgraded Zoom, which means that you people right now who are watching the live stream on Facebook are seeing the, if, if I'm, if we've done it right, you are seeing the, uh, Wow, I only see two people on the Facebook, but there is a delay on it. So we'll see what happens. Maybe they'll come up in just a second. Uh, my, my words are being uh, streamed across the bottom on Zoom. Very interesting. Hmm. <laughs> but I do not, what I do not see is the other people that I can see on Zoom, I only see Gene. I don't see Patricia. I don't see Debbie. Do you see that, Gene? No, I do not. Um, you okay. may have to, this format is a little different. You may have to click start your video on your computer. That's what I had to do. The upper, the little blue square in the upper right corner. I don't have that. Yours is already going. Mm -hmm. Looks like it. Plus you're the host. Yeah, but uh, what's happening though on the uh, on Facebook is is that it's only showing you and me and Patricia. Yeah, it's not showing anybody else. So I'll have to work on that. But otherwise, uh, it's looking good. The question is, will the people on Zoom? Be Wait a minute. There we go. G now Dale is up on. Uh, he's up on Facebook. Maybe it'll just take a second or something. Uh, maybe. I'm on Zoom, Bert. You're on both. Well, I like to be in two places at one time. Now, you, well, you, you definitely are. All right. So hopefully, hopefully, now I have a test video to play that's only 60 seconds long. So we might try that first and see if everybody can see it. Is that a plan? And then we'll uh, get into the study. All right. Sure. So... Mm -mm -mm -mm. A little different. You may have to click start your video on your computer. I'm pressing share screen and then I go to, I believe, wow, that's really boomy from somebody. Wow. Share screen and then I go to, all right. Turn y'all turn off your mic if you're not talking, okay? Because there's a boom happening. Okay, I, I need the desktop. Okay, let's try. Let's try this video and see what happens. Hope it works. I don't see the video. I know it's there because I just put it there. <laughs> I see our, our video for our study. I don't see the little one that I just posted shortly ago, though. Hmm. Interesting. We'll try it again. Still don't see it. Hmm. So let me start over. Okay, I'm on the desktop. 
and it should be right there on the desktop next to the other video and it's not well let's see if you can see the actual video we're going to do since i can't find that one this is all brand new to me y'all hang in there can you see a bit thing the screen that says clip one yes okay now i'm going to facebook to check and it looks like we've got clip one there as well <laughs> love it love it Mike, for a happy man, Bert. Two of Patricia now. Okay. Two of Patricia now. That's good. We need twice as much Patricia. Oh, yeah. Especially Once with, with the scarf in your head. We need two scarves. <laughs> All right. So we uh, we seem to be doing uh, exactly what I had planned. That's good. Y'all ready to see clip one? Go. Okay. So on clip one, um, by the way, a couple of prayer requests. Sheila. Um, who is always here with us, Sheila E. DeToya Lawson, Larson, um, is, um, she just emailed me, a, uh, texted me a few minutes ago, and I passed it along to some of you all, um, and she said that she's headed to the COVID hospital, uh, it's a Catholic hospital in Shreveport, they have more room, and she said she'd let me know when she's there, um, she thinks she has a mild case of COVID, but uh, I think you know any case of COVID is fairly serious so we got to look out for that also Kimberly Willis um New and Kirk uh Kim is the pianist at Mount Gilead United Methodist Church her husband is Michael they've been to Owl Rock uh, several times uh she played for our services before and Kim uh is Michael says is fighting for her life um right now with COVID uh, in the hospital and she is intubated. So we got somebody coming in? Kia. Uh, all right, we are admitting Kia. All right, so let's move uh, to clips one, two, mm -hmm. and three. Now, if you wanna take notes, you can. Um, what, what I'd like you to do is just enjoy them because they are enjoyable. And uh, you should be able to make comment while it's playing if you want to. And um, are, are they biblical? So we've got clip one is sort of a Hindi Bollywood musical nativity from years ago. Um, clip two is, uh, sounds like it's in sort of some sort of Arabic dialect. I'm recognizing some of the words though they're pronounced differently. And the third one, um, I, I'm not sure what the language is. Uh, it sounds also a little bit like Arabic. And uh, all three of them have to do with Jesus's childhood and birth. So um, take a note, are, are these biblical? And <laughs> I guess it's the sort of the study question, but the other question is, what in the world were these people thinking? You ready? Ready. All right, I'm playing it. I guess these are the shepherds that are sheep from asleep. Mm -hmm. The uh, head shepherd is very sensitive. Mm -hmm. So the sheep are in a pen, and the angel is a eight-year-old girl. I think. Translation. Yes, all angels in the Bible are eight-year-old girls. Hey Mike, can you hear me talking? Ding? Can you hear me talking?
Thank you, Mike. Translation, I swear to tell the truth. Okay, that's is that Gandhi? That baby looks a little like Gandhi. Rajao ke raja padhare dekho, deva dhi dev padhare dekho, pariya khushi se mana pehnaai, bole bale bache tujhe denge sada pyaar. I think this is the one star. Um, that outfit kind of looks like that of Tarzan. I don't know what all the blooming flowers are. We have a cave sort of, but I don't see that one over there. I do see the blue eyes in there on the side. Two. Um, this one's more in sort of an Arabic language. Yusuf ne Galil ke nazrat shahar ko chhod diya. So that uh, uh, I'm understanding a few words there. Wahan se wo Daud ke shahar, jise Bethlehem kaha jaata hai. Joseph took Mary. Um, Taaki is shahar ki ginti mein wo apni pati ke saath shamil ho sake. And she is great with child. And there's Bethlehem on the hill. Wave in the distance. Thi. तो उसके गर्भ के दिन पूरे मैंने वहाँ भूसा बिछा दिया। तकलीफ के लिए माफ करना। And we skip ahead a few moments later, and we have Gandhi. I mean, Shukri. Jesus born, and and Joseph just said to the midwife, um, "Shukran," or which means thank you. He said, "Shukriya." Arabic-like language, not Arabic. And there's no, there are no magi yet. Okay, here, here are the sheep, and they are not in the fields. They are on a rocky hillside with four shepherds who are uh, apparently also traveling Shakespearean musicians. सब लोगों के लिए एक अच्छी खबर लेकर आया हूं आज वो पैदा हो चुका है दाऊद के शहर में हम सब का रक्षा जिसे दुनिया यीशु के नाम से जानेगी इसका संकेत बता दू बच्चा कपड़े में लिपटा एक नांद के बाड़े में होगा क्या तुम सब लोग नहीं जाने वाले हो So he said, चलो देखते हैं कि परमात्मा ने क्या चमत्कार दिखाया है सामने आए उन्होंने हमें बच्चे के जन्म के बारे में बताया हमारा रक्षक हमारा मसीहा 
अंदर आ जाओ And now I can't hear y'all. I'm hoping you can hear me with my little uh, sad commentary. So we don't have Magi at the manger in the cave outside of Bethlehem, but we do have the entire village now coming to gather around the baby and to sing or something. All right, clip three. Now here is. Uh, Joseph with a piece of wood because you know he's a carpenter. And Joseph's like, "Who are all these people? We got guards, we got camels, like they got spears." He's like heading home with this piece of wood, and he sees these three dudes. Okay, of course there are three wise men, magi, and in an earlier scene, this guy right here cries a lot, and and he says that uh, he's looking for the Messiah. He said, uh, "Peace be unto you." Maryam, Maryam, it's I, Maryam. He calls her Miriam, and then he leans over and he says, "They've come to see Ye Yeshua." Listen, he says the name Yeshua. Shalom. <laughs> They knew. Well, we got this age right. As Patricia just noted, they got his age right. Matthew says they they came to pay homage to the new king of Judah, but um, this guy is looking for the Messiah. He sort of is like a Simeon type figure, you know, the ancient prophet Simeon who was looking for the Messiah. So here we have the entourage, three magi with an entourage of people and lots of stuff. And here's your gold frankincense and myrrh. Jesus is checking it out. He's like, "Oh, I want a new Xbox, Ma. I want the gold. Give me the gold." And he's—it's a moving scene. Um, this is from a Mormon film. In the scene of the Magi, Joseph is not mentioned. He's not present. He has no role. He has no lines. Not even mentioned. It's just Mary and the child. He would have been about two years old. And if you want to know what a real first century manger looks like, there you are, Dale. White limestone. All right, we're back. Everybody there? Good, good, good. Do we need to let anybody in? I don't see any new participants. Thank you for being here, Dale, Jean, Kia, Debbie, Patricia, and the rest of you over on Facebook, uh, which includes my brother Mike and who else? Paula. Mm -hmm. I can't tell who else because they're the only ones that uh, commented. So uh, you saw three clips. I'm just wondering uh, if you have anything to say. Where's the popcorn? <laughs> Dale, I don't know if they heard that or not over the internet, so I'll repeat. Where's the popcorn? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Movie night. <laughs> well, personally, you know, uh, the third act with the magi and the boy jesus i personally found that to be pretty powerful i i like the authenticity of it 
and the characterization and the connection in that video it's, it's it, to me that's pretty powerful it was it is powerful it touched me emotionally and i think gene you said something similar yeah i mean it doesn't get more more simple and yet more human um the only thing if i was directing and i would add i think when the guy bowed down i'd have jesus touch his head ah uh, pass the blessing back and i think the third one seems to be the most accurate I mean, you know, based on the scriptures. Um, so, you know, in 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 relation to the first and the second one, at least. Yeah, in relation to the yeah. first. And second one. Mm -hmm. So, so what was what was accurate and what wasn't accurate about the third one? So, as I mentioned earlier, that Jesus was two years old. Jesus was two. How many? You know how hard it is to find a video on YouTube where Jesus is two when the Magi I'm show up. Any. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just not there. But that is accurate biblically. He was too. And they were in a house living in Bethlehem. So uh, what else was accurate or inaccurate about it? Well, you, you had three magi, wise men. You know, there's no reference in scripture of the number. I mean, we yeah. assume, mm -hmm. you know, the gifts were there. The mm -hmm. gifts were accurate, but, but the number plus, I don't think in the biblical story, there are other people there or recognizes other people being present when the magi came yeah in the um in the scene it seems that the the whoever was producing it in terms of their research figured that three wealthy magi with expensive stuff on their camels would not have come without an entourage including guards mm. So all of those people you saw came with the Magi, except for a few townspeople that walked by outside. All those other people were with the Magi helping them. They, they were employees of the Magi. By the way, it's also pronounced Magi, not Magi. Fair assumption on their part. Yeah, I think it is a fair assumption. I, I, it's sort it, of like the, the, the Joseph is not mentioned, but he's not said that he's not there. It doesn't say he's not there. It doesn't say he's there. That's correct. And go so, back to, uh, was it the number two clip? Uh, you know, it doesn't say there was a midwife, but it's safe to assume there was one. Yes, particularly since um, they were at their own home and they were living with family. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the houses in that day were multi-generational dwellings. And um, people lived in relatively close quarters. Houses weren't very large. This house in the third clip is huge mm. compared to what I've seen in terms of, and I think Dale will back me up on this. That house in the third scene was really big, tall ceilings, large rooms. Mm -hmm. um, I have never seen a first century house in Capernaum or Bethsaida uh, or Nazareth or anywhere else that large. Um, You're correct. Yeah, um, the um, I didn't see a the inn or an innkeeper. You know, like usually shows up and use in most of our Christmas plays. Yes, um, I click. I actually in the first and the second one. I'm not sure about the third one, but in the first and the second one, there there was uh, an innkeeper, and uh, that turned them away. But what I did was I took a full length move hour and a half movie. And I just clipped out the little part mm -hmm. that you saw for three minutes. Um, I think the, the important thing that got clipped out of the third one is, is that in that third film, the Magi, the one with no hair, spoke about how uh, when they saw whatever they saw, a celestial event, he said something, uh, he was saying something and he used the word Mashiach, which means Messiah. Um, in the scripture, they never say Messiah. They no, say no. King of Judea. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and you know, in scene two, when the glowing heavenly host came to the shepherds and made the proclamation about the birth, mm -hmm. uh, most people, when they think about that particular scene, think about the proclamation being sung or something, but it's it clearly says in scripture 
they said it, you know, the heavenly host said to the shepherds. And I, I, I like the authenticity of that too, where, you know, scripturally that's, fair, that's accurate about the proclamation. It was one angel that spoke to them and then the heavenly hosts sang, uh, n- did not sing, it, but said glory to God in the highest. Yeah. And that's, that's scripturally accurate. Yeah. Um, Jesus is in, um, Jesus is uh, born in a cave in clip two that looks a little bit like the cave beneath the church of the Holy Sepulchre. Didn't mm-hmm. you think so, Dale? I sure did. That was pretty it was, good, really. It wasn't downtown Bethlehem, though. It was, uh, it was out of town. So, um, but it, it was interesting to see it in a cave. But if you look online for art that's not from America, or from Europe. If you look for art and books and videos that are from Asia, including India, um, it's always a cave because they know of the church, the traditions being Orthodox, most of them, um, they know of the tradition of the cave. Uh, and, and most Catholics do too, I believe, but it's the, it's the Orthodox that have embraced the cave. Mm. And it doesn't say a cave in scripture, but we've got a cave that is identified in early traditions in the Middle East as being the place where Christians worshiped his birth. And they refer to a cave going back to the second and third centuries. So there's good attestation there of this being the site. And at the same time, where were animals uh, kept? Where would a manger have been? Well, the caves beneath the house, houses there um, were known to have mangers, were known to be where they would keep the sheep in certain times of the year. But not that night. That night, the sheep were in the fields, Mm -hmm. not on a rocky hillside, in the agricultural fields, Mm -hmm. but not in any of those movies. Something that stood out to me was the, um, the actual manger, one made out of wood, and one made out of stone. Mm-hmm. And um, you said it's usually made out of stone. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. Well, the mangers that we have seen in excavations are soft limestone. When they, when they excavate limestone for buildings, they're looking for the really hard, good, fine stuff. But a lot of times they get into uh, stuff that's kind of like marl. It's just soft, powdery, crumbled, more cl- crumbly. So they can put, they can carve those out to make tombs or they can use it to carve out things that they need around the house and everybody needs a manger for their animals. So, so they didn't lift them then. I mean, they couldn't lift the babies if, if they were made out of stone. They couldn't lift the baby. They couldn't lift the main. The, the oh yeah, they could they lift can. it. It's heavy. But the idea is you, you know, you put the manger in its spot there, although it doesn't say a stable in scripture, one would assume. Mm-hmm. So it, it just happens to be there. It's a part of the furniture of the basement. Yeah, and uh, as Dale will tell you, um, he's got zillions of pictures of them. So they're limestone, right, in the excavations? Yes, they are. You, you find them at uh, Megiddo. Uh, there's one uh, at, at the, the tomb of Joseph at the Sisters of Nazareth convent. There's some down there also. So. Uh, every every one I've seen is a you know looked like the one that, in the video actually looked very, that one in the video was very accurate. It was similar, yes. Yep. Limestone can be any color from kind of a chalky white to a sort of a stained tooth yellowish color, and it can be very soft. Yeah, and it's soft enough that you can easily you know chisel it out. It's not it's easy to to manipulate. It's no good for building, really, especially if you're building a big building. But yeah, I mean, um, uh, Gene Ron was telling me that he had a friend that was not convinced about, you know, stuff like the wood, the stone manger versus wooden manger thing. And no one can prove that it very well could have been made of wood. But I just want to point out the basics that wood was scarce and it was expensive, so much so that when they found a first century fishing boat 
in the mud when the Sea of Galilee was low back in the 80s because of a drought. They did analysis on the wood that the boat was made from, and they found that it was from between 11 and 13 different kinds of trees, and that almost every piece of that boat had been recycled from a previous boat. Wood was so scarce, they were recycling it when they re rebuilt boats, and it was coming from all different kinds of trees. Right. Um, when we do excavations, we don't find much made out of wood. Of course, wood deteriorates over time, but we find what what we find there is that the houses are made of stone and the implements are stone and the manger is stone. That's what we find in the excavations. Well, doesn't it say in the Bible that Jesus was a carpenter and so was Joseph? Yeah, that brings up another interesting idea. Yeah. Because it's, it's a no, it yeah, I know it's a, it's a translation problem because the Greek word that's used in scripture for Jesus and his father being quote unquote carpenters, the word is tecton, and tecton means builder. Now, Bob, if, Bob the builder is a distant relative of Jesus. Yeah. Who the builder? Kids' cartoon, Bob the builder. Bob the builder. I don't know that cartoon, but <laughs> I I, I'll, I'll, just, I'm just dropping names. I will, I will go <laughs> along with you on that one. Um, yeah, so if normally from what I read, and I've read as much as I can find on this, normally in ancient literature, if a person was a builder with stone, it would actually say a tecton of stone, of course, in the original Greek. Or if someone was a carpenter, it would say tecton of wood. Or if someone did work with metal and made things with metal, like a craftsman, it would be tecton of metal. And it's even used in some literature to speak of a person who is a writer, one who uh, composes. So you are a builder of words, right? right. So, so what did Jesus, what did, so my, my question when I, I talk to people about this and, and it's okay to keep your carpenter shop because Jesus very well may have been skilled in working with wood, um, but, uh, what did Jesus teach about? Did he teach about carpentry or did he teach about building with houses and rocks? Yeah, building. More he building. talked about rocks and stones and building his church. And, I, and he talked about building your house on, on rock instead of sand. And um, he, he nicknamed, he even nicknamed one of his uh, disciples Rocky. So I guess <laughs> there's more involved here. Uh, than, than we think when we start to think about it, because when you teach, you teach about what you know, and G Jesus didn't teach about building uh, with wood. He didn't speak about woodworking, not once, but he spoke constantly about stones and rocks and building things like buildings. So you think the word carpenter was misinterpreted? The word carpenter isn't in the Bible. The word tecton is, and it means builder. Right. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, people hear the yeah, word it's building mistranslated. and it's been translated differently. Yeah, mistranslated. Hmm. And again, following suit, a lot of a lot of the more modern translations who go along with Carpenter, it's just, it, it's one of those things where I think people were the Bible publishers are afraid to change it, even when their scholars tell them they should, because that's one of those things where you just don't want to take Jesus's dad's carpenter shop away from him because it's in our mind it's in our it's it's seared in our memories and our understanding and our memories and stories from you know childhood and sunday school and but let's look at what the words originally meant and um and let me move toward an alternative vision that uh for adults that includes what the words actually mean the words tecton t-e-k-t-o-n it's where we uh, get the word uh, tectonics. And tectonics um, is the study of the Earth's movement of the Earth's crust. And last time I checked, the Earth's crust is not made of wood. Mm. And it's where we get the word architecture, mm -hmm. tecton. But the Apostle Paul used the word when he was speaking about it. Um, I believe he re was referring to himself as um, uh, the um, master architect for the church. He was building up the churches. He meant it metaphorically. Mm -hmm. 
um, you might uh, be interested to know that there, there are only two named angels in the scripture. They both have male names. Do you know what they are? Gabriel. Gabriel. Michael. And Michael. That's it. Mike, your brother's an angel. Mike's listening. Yeah, my, my brother's listening. <laughs> You're an angel, Mike. And, um, and so far as we know in scripture, um, although there's one or two places, I, I thought maybe you could say that there were female angels, but I think it's also safe to say probably not, but I don't know why. So why do you think um, most Christians using plays would use female for, angel, for the part of angels? I think that, that for plays, especially since children are involved, it gives them a role to play. Because you've got you've got male wise men, you've got male shepherds. Well, we're going to have girl angels. Hmm. With wings. With yes, with <laughs> wings. We do have wings. <laughs> so why couldn't women be wise women? You know, um, that's, that that I mean, seems gender bias. Well, it is kind of gender specific in that I'm I'm not sure that there were women magi. I, I've never read that there were. Hmm. but magi were real people we've got all kinds of literature from the ancient world going back to as far as 500 bc this is a class of um babylonian slash zoroastrian scholars and they are astrologers astronomers and interpreters of dream and ancient wisdom They, they interpreted dreams. They knew a lot about a lot of things. They also could be rather uh, nasty characters, as we pointed out uh, a couple of times already in some of our other studies and sermons. Um, we've got uh, one called, what was his name? Simon Magus, Simon the Magi mm -hmm. in Acts. And then we've got uh, another one that was named, wasn't his name Jesus too? Uh, bar no, bar jesus mm -hmm. was uh um was a magi on the island of cyprus which i hear people over there pronounce it kiprus can mm -hmm. you believe that mm -hmm. cyprus pronounced kiprus but there you go and capernaum is kafarnechum yeah and the seda is betsaida and on and on we don't pronounce things how about i love i love um uh, Caesarea Philippi, the pronunciation is probably Caesarea Philippi, mm -hmm. <laughs> but no one would know you were talking about, right? Or Mount Carmel. Yeah, Mount Carmel. Um, and the way we pronounce people's names, Jesus is not what people called him. They, his name was Yehoshua, which was shortened to Yeshua. Mm -hmm. And it means Joshua. We Joshua and Jesus are the same name in Hebrew and, uh, and in Greek. So Yehoshua, and it turns into Jesus through the Greek, to the Latin, to the English. Over the centuries, became Jesus. But you, you know uh, people in Mexico, they named their child Jesus. But they, Jesus? Yeah, it's Jesus. Well, I think language is something powerful and significant about languages, like in our culture and a lot of Caribbean um, countries. So we put emphasis on, um, you know, the first syllabus as opposed to the last syllabus, mm -hmm. you know, um, like, you know, guitar, for instance, and you always tell me, it's not guitar. How do you pronounce it? Well, it is guitar if you're from Dalestown. <laughs> Up in Tennessee, they say guitar. <laughs> <laughs> but in but in Hebrew it's in Hebrew it's guitar. Yeah, and and, and it, it's the Caribbean. It's not the Caribbean. These are, uh, Caribbean, <laughs> Caribbean. I'm from there, Dale. I know how it's pronounced. That's right. I, I live I live in where Bert says, and we don't say guitar. I know we we get into arguments all about all the time about not you know real arguments but in terms of how the way Sorry, I pronounce Dale. something and the way that he pronounces it and um yeah it's like you know he always tells me I don't know how to pronounce my own name you know you think I, you think you think tell him what your name is Patricia 
And that's not what you say sometimes, though. <laughs> Patricia. She says she puts R's on the end of things sometimes. It's really unusual. That's not unusual. That's the way we speak. Patricia? British. Yes, it's British. That is British, old boy. We should go with Trish so we don't have to argue about the R. The I end. know my name. You say potato. She you says say potato. potato. I know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so, do y'all need, need a moment for discussion here? Yep. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to raise the point about in terms of how we were talking about Jesus or Jesus or pronunciation, what you started out pronouncing. Um, um, you know, Maggie, Magi, Magi, Magi yeah. uh, you know, all of those names. I think it's because of but where they, in Israel, there's a certain pronunciation around names. Saul is, you know, but, Saul is Shaul, you know? Yeah. And Paul is Paulos. Yeah. And instead of Caesarea, Philippi, you know, Philippi. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's pronunciation because of and that part of the world. Thessaloniki instead yeah. of Thessalonica. Thessalonica. We say Thessalonica. You don't say Thessalonica? No, we say Thessalonica. Thessalonica, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thessalonians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, first and second. And go on there for and on and on. We we learned the 66 books when we were five years old. We yeah. say front and backwards. And so that's the way we learned it, you know. Pronunci pronunciation as well. Yeah, Joseph's an interesting name too. I, I believe the Hebrew pronunciation is um Yusuf, is it? Is it not? I know it's Arabic. It's Yusuf, isn't it? In Hebrew, it's Yusuf too, right, Dale? That is correct. Yeah, yeah and Mary is Miriam. Mm -hmm. Mary is Miriam. And schedule and schedule, you know, uh, yeah. all that. You know, I get schedule. always, I get stopped all the time in my classes in in Florida. And I'm just spelling savior with a U and behavior with a U. Behavior with a U. And, and my, my right. teacher, my professor had all these red marks and I was livid. And I <laughs> went with my book and I'm like, this is the correct spelling. You don't know how to spell savior and behavior. <laughs> and didn't realize I was spelling it the way I was taught. It's in British, British spelling. British spelling. And but an American, I had to come up to par and learn the American way of spelling savior and behavior and the like. And so, I mean, I learned a lot. It was just. Uh, yeah, Patricia, I, I think you're making your own valid point about why there weren't any women magi because of culture, yeah. maybe because of the, the writing styles. You know, just like I grew up in the heart of Appalachia, so we do, we do things a little differently and we say things differently just because of where I grew up. And, and you know, that's true about Bethlehem or that region. I mean, it, it's, it's also dictated by culture. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Dale. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certain cultures, women didn't do certain jobs, and um, yeah, it was just dedicated to the males. And and same thing in our culture, the women are almost branded as house cleaners, and you wash and you cook. It's like that's your job, that's your role. The men do all the hard stuff outside with the car, the mechanic, and you know the trash and all the kind of stuff. Like these um, tasks are assigned from birth, so to speak, you know, in, in certain cultures. Well, so I get and, that. And in Jesus's culture, too, you, you, you see it again and again where it's the, the men who are generally working outside of the home and the women are going for water or cooking. Mm. Yeah. Mary and Martha, you know, they were cooking and serving mm -hmm. and um, the, the woman at the well, you know, women fetched water. Yeah. It was considered a women's a woman's task. So they had they it was very it was more gender specific for sure than it is today in terms of traditional roles. Mm. Well, maybe Debbie, that's where Daddy got that from about fetching water. <laughs> Y'all, you know, you know, you're not joking. She told me one time this, and I couldn't believe it. Y'all really did have to go get water. Mm -hmm. Across, you. across the street. Uh, you did. <laughs> across the street. So I, got, I got knocked down one time. <laughs> oh, you mean by a car? Yeah. So you got hit by a car going to the well. I don't know if I was going to get water, but we went to the stores in different places. So when but... you went to get water, was it in a well or did it come out of a faucet? No, it was a pump. That just, uh, it was a pump. A pump, yeah. On the side of the street. Man, that's, that's you know, and I think you have to go back to my grandmother's time mm -hmm. to see that in the Atlanta area mm -hmm. to see a pump. 
Yeah. But I bet they have, I bet Dale saw him growing up. <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> Uh, Patricia, your your culture and mine were very similar when it comes to our history and our time. Okay. It is very similar. Appalachia. I mean, cool. Appalachia. 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 Really? That's how it's pronounced? If you don't say Appalachia, you're not from Appalachia. Gotcha. So gotcha. the Appalachian Trail, the Appalachian, that's incorrect? Oh that wow! Okay. There's yeah, no like, latch. There's there's no latch and latch. <laughs> there's no latch. <laughs> um, there's no T in Atlanta either. If you're from Atlanta, everybody from Atlanta says Atlanta. There's no. There are no T's. Atlanta. No, what, it's called Hotlanta anyway. <laughs> you no, know, no. And, and people from Atlanta don't like Hotlanta either. But <laughs> the, the the latest word for for Atlanta is ATL or just mm -hmm. or just the A. Mm -hmm. mm. That's what they call it mostly. Yeah. Shall we talk about New Orleans? Yeah, <laughs> New Orleans for sure. <laughs> if they say New Orleans, they're not from there. Yeah, that's correct. New Orleans, got it. It's and like well, if record, you live, Saint, Saint Augustine's in Florida. Saint Augustine was a saint. There you go. Mm -hmm. and, and you can live near Knoxville or Knoxville. Oh. No. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Shall hey, we I'm the guy that's serving Lafayette Church. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Instead of Lafayette, yeah, that's right. And 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 what about Arkansas? How do you pronounce Arkansas? Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah, over there you do. The river of the state. I don't, I'm not sure. I think the state's the supposed river to be Arkansas. Hmm. Oh, that's that's a differentiation. It's based there. on Kansas. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, um, someone asked me, I can't remember who it was. It was, it was probably Pinhas Parat, who was a, uh, a late archaeologist over in Israel one time. He was talking to one of our groups. I think it was Pinhas. And he said, um, so, um, you know, we, we hear about um, uh, Dan, the Old Testament tell and city of Dan in the Bible. He said, how do you pronounce it? And we said, Dan. And he said, no, it's Don. And where is that in the New Testament? And no one, one, no one could think. Um, is someone in the waiting room? Mm -hmm. It's Debbie. Yeah, she got dropped. I she probably got dropped. Mm -hmm. Let her back in. There she is. Hey, Debbie, welcome back. So um, he was like, "Where, where is Don in the New Testament?" And I couldn't think of where it was in the New Testament. He said, "Think about the river, the Jordan River." Jordan, it means above Dan. Mm. And the spring, one of the springs that feeds, there are three springs that feed the Jordan River, and one of them comes out of Dan. Mm. One comes out of Banyas, and one is called the Hasbani. So Dan is actually in the New Testament every time they say Jordan River. Okay. Yeah. I guess you can buy that. <laughs> so then would it be incorrect? I don't know if it's right to say that one is incorrect if they pronounce it the way that they were taught or their culture pronounces it as opposed to how the people in Jerusalem on Israel would pronounce the yeah. name, you know, the word. And, and the Arabs and the, and the Jews, they don't pronounce words the same way, even amongst themselves. So, mm. I, you know, I guess when we're looking at the Bible, what we're trying to do is pronounce the Greek and the Hebrew as best we can, given that those are not our native languages and modern hebrew is not the same as ancient hebrew you know modern hebrew uh, ancient hebrew died it wasn't spoken anywhere by anyone except for those who were reading from the scriptures and they were just doing the best that they could but in terms of modern hebrew um they had to invent it you know for and uh learn it and teach it to their kids and that was a whole new thing and ancient greek no one speaks that anymore if you, but in Greece, many of the words are similar and they use the same alphabet. The Greek alphabet is very similar to our English alphabet. Mm. You can recognize some of the letters. The A is the same. You know, the, B, the capital B is the same. Um, you, you, you know, just, you can see an E, which is Eta. And we use, uh, we're probably more familiar with the Greek from people's sororities and fraternities. You know, like Kappa Alpha Gamma or whatever these 
course, they're not pronouncing it right, but um, they use the Greek the sorority. words for sororities and fraternities. Yep. Uh, the Roman numbers are nothing like the numbers we use. It's yeah, the nomen rumors are, are very difficult to use, but it's just a more primitive mm -hmm. form of, of, of um, numer numerology. Is that what the word is? So, yeah. so um, back to our, our movies, um, thoughts and stuff as we uh, move toward the end of our discussion. What does it make you think about in terms of the future too? I mean, when you see movies like this about, I mean, I know, you know I picked especially the first one because I thought it was funny, but it does reflect, though in a sort of caricatured way, it does reflect something of what you see when you go to see a children's play. By the way, I wish I could have played that other video. It is hilarious. Um, I really wish I could have played the other video because it shows a children's play. I've got it right here on my desktop. How come I can't play it? It's, it's sheep, Mary, tussle over baby Jesus. I wish I could play it for y'all before this is over. Let me try. I, I really do want to try. Where'd you guys go? I'm right here. There's some other comments from Facebook. Jonah. Oh, here we go. Oh, Jonah. Hey, Jonah. Um, let me try one more time. You know, it's only showing one video. It's only showing one video in this on my desktop, and I know that there are two. Um, is it hiding in there somewhere? I just don't see it. I wish I could play it for you. What's the name of it? Um, the name of the video on my desktop is uh, Sheep Mary Tussle Over Baby Jesus. Okay. I can, uh, can I do it on YouTube? Maybe. How do you do YouTube on, um, on here? You have to go to down at the bottom of the screen. And, uh, Share screen, hang on, hang on. Basic screen, whiteboard, phone. Ooh. Once you got the movie up, then you would hit share there. But you have to have the movie. Up I have first. to have the movie up. Okay, I can so do go, that. Go beyond. Yeah. I can do that. Mm -hmm. And if I go to um, history, there it is. Okay. So I'm pulling it up. Why doesn't every home in the U.S. Of course, it has commercials that you all have to suffer through. But um, now let me go here. It might say to you, shift found. And have solar panels. The number one reason is not about sunlight or weather or even politics. It's actually just because most- Can you all see that? People don't know. No. Hang on. What do you see right now? Do you see me? There do we go. See? Now I do. Do you see it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna skip the ad and I'm gonna play. Is it playing? No. No, it's like it's stuck. Okay, this little girl stole the baby Jesus out of the manger. Can you see that or not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's buffering real bad. Yeah, it is. You're right. <laughs> That's Mary and one of the sheep fighting over the baby Jesus. And Mary's about to tackle her. Okay, Mary, Mary, don't play like that. <laughs> Grab her by the head. 
Mary's like, no, we got to get him back. <laughs> Take her to the ground. <laughs> Parents intervene quickly. <laughs> How about that? That's funny. Okay, now I've got to try to turn this off. I don't know if I can. I'm going to try. I don't know how to do. I don't know how to do any of this. Do what? X out. X out. Of YouTube. How? Yeah. Right there in the corner. No, I can't shut that. You, that Ron, Ron is waiting to be admitted. Where's you Ron? To, you should be at the hilarious Christmas nativity. You should X that out. Hmm. Okay, where are we? Okay, now now I should be able to bring this back up to the to the middle, right? Oh, I can just stay there. Okay, All right. Well, so we're, right yeah, I should be able to bring this back up. To the, hey, Ron, you got to. Right? Oh, okay. I muted Ron. I hate that I did that. Did I mute everybody or just Ron? Just Ron. Just Ron. Yeah, okay. Let's see if he's turned his uh, microphone or, or noise down. I'm letting him back in. Stop sharing. Hey, hey Ron. Red. Stop sharing the red. Oh yeah, stop share. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we are back. There's Ron. Welcome, Ron. You're late. We're just about to end. Well, I when I tried to log in with your with just the Zoom app like I do with with Pastor Martino, it wanted a code of some kind. Well, I'll have to give the code then next time to make sure you all have the backup to it. Um, I will do that. I'll make sure that y'all have the backup code next time. But I've been watching you on, on Facebook. Oh, good. I'm glad you were there. Good. Um, any more any more comments for tonight? Someone else seems to be in the waiting room. We do have someone else in the waiting room. We have Sheila. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're about to see Sheila from the hospital in uh, Shreveport. We're connecting to Sheila. Here she comes, I think. There's audio. Connecting to audio. Maybe I hope she's got a signal in that hospital. There she is. Sheila, can you hear us? Yes, I can. There hey, she is. is. Oh, Bless wow. your heart. You got the whole oxygen thing going. Oh, my God. Sheila. Uh, Things are going uh, better than what they were. I um I guess all my tests came back very good. I just got uh, congestion around the heart, and um, as long as that I can keep the fluids flowing through, that they may uh, let me go home uh, in a couple of days. That sounds great. Wow! Oh my God, that's scary, Sheila. I'm, I remember you saying that you had like a, a mild case. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Why do they say that? Well, because I didn't, I haven't lost my taste. I uh, haven't lost my smell. And I, all I had was diarrhea and very weak. So that was a very mild case. Okay, okay, okay. Well, all and right. We're so glad to see you and know that you're doing well. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, press for you, Sheila, for sure. My God. Well, it was very scary at first. Yeah. Very scary at first. Are they allowing um, visitors for you? Yeah. Like, can family come and be with you? Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, I'm yeah. glad. I'm yeah. glad. Well, yeah. Rob, did Rob kind of go over to Shreveport with you? Is he holding down the fort or what? Do what now? Did Rob go over there with you? No, no. He's, He's at home. Okay, holding down the fort. All right. Down the fort. You know, yeah. we've got we've got a, a, a lovely lady uh, named Kim who plays piano at Mount Gilead um, Methodist, and she's they actually have her. I think she's um, sedated and intubated right now. She's uh, bless for, her. Heart. I know she's a, a local United Methodist piano player here in our mm -hmm. area, and she's really got it bad. Uh, so prayers for her. And by the way, Jonah prayed for you. She's a friend of ours from South Georgia. I prayed today. Good, good. Yeah. Good. Well, everybody, so glad you're here, especially you, Sheila. 
Mm. Well, I, I said, well, I wanted to get on real quick. I don't know how long I can stay on. Right. Well, we're, we're, we're checking out now anyway. We finished the study and it's already like 7.32. Oh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'd like to see your face and hope you'll be back with us soon. I will be. Don't you worry. Well, thanks to everybody at, um, at Lafayette. We're thanks to Jean, you, Dale, Sheila. Sheila, Patricia, Ron, Debbie, everybody. Glad you were here today. And those of you on Facebook, Mike, and I don't know who else. Paula. But Paula, Jonah. we're glad y'all were here. Jonah. Uh, y'all have a wonderful evening, and uh, we'll see you on Sunday now. On Sunday, it's our worship service is at 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern. Jeans is at 10 o'clock Central, 11 o'clock Eastern. And we'll be right back here. Um, Gene will have his study at 10 o'clock a.m. on Wednesdays, Central, 11 Eastern. And we'll keep reminding you about that. And then you'll see us next week. Same time, same channel here at 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central. God bless all of you. Yes. Bye, y'all. Good to see you. Go Bulldogs. Good evening. Bye, okay. go, go Bulldogs and Braves. Yeah. <laughs> see y'all later. See you later. Right. Bye, Gene. Okay. Oh, did I leave?